So yeah, I've been here the last few days running the open source village where we've been promoting open source in security and securing open source. And I'm using our slot here today to shamelessly plug an open source package that I work on, along with uh, my colleagues Ian and Ashwin, who are also in the room. So why should you care about Mystic Pi? Well, if you work in any security role, really, from security analysis, threat intelligence, incident response, or security research, like myself, it's a tool to help you be more effective and efficient at your job, to automate and speed up regular processes, such as querying and analyzing data, uh, to help you find new insights in your data through visualizations and analysis packages, uh, and to, to kind of provide an easy world, easy way into the world of Python and particular Jupyter notebooks for security analysis. So if you've worked with, uh, if you've worked with KQL before, if you've worked with our security tools before, this is a really useful way of kind of tying together disparate systems and data sources into an end-to-end -end flow. We have users across Microsoft. Uh, they keep coming out of the woodwork. We've met quite a few this week who have come up and said, hey, I use Mystic Pi. But teams like DSR, uh, MSRC, SOC teams, uh, LinkedIn, they, they use Mystic Pi, but it's also one for the general public. It's an open source project, it's on GitHub. Our customers can pick it up and use it as well. So if you're talking with people in those roles, if you work in those roles, it's definitely a project to look at. So what does Mystic Pi do? It's not an easy answer. Mystic Pi is a collection of tools. You can use them as standalone items, or you can use them together in a tool chain or a, a process. But what we're trying to do is help with the common tasks that security roles face, particularly when we're talking about analyzing and understanding data to find threats and investigate them. Sorry, I think I have timings on these slides, so they keep changing. But uh, we, we kind of have four key areas. Collecting data, enriching data, analyzing data, and visualizing data. And these are what we see as kind of the core components of like a security analyst job. You know, you get your data from your data sources, whether it be your SIM, like Microsoft Sentinel. You collect that and combine it with data from other sources relevant to you, network data, endpoint data, whatever it might be. Uh, you then want to maybe understand that data in a bit more detail. So you want to enrich it with details from your threat intelligence platform. Maybe you want to get some uh, context around who is data. Is the IP data in your data set related to some Azure assets? Then you want to go and analyze it. Where's the cool stuff in there? What should I be interested in? What can I rule out as benign activity? What should I focus on as suspicious activity? And then finally, you want to kind of see that data. So it could be as a timeline or a graph or... Maybe you, uh, you want to create a process tree with your endpoint data. So these are really the areas we try and, we try and hit upon. These have grown over time. We primarily started with a focus on things like uh, Microsoft's external facing customer tool sets, so Sentinel, MDE. But it's grown to include third party data sources. So we have support for Splunk um, and also things like Custo. So if you're an internal team and you have all your data in Custo, we've got connectors for you. And these are growing over time. We, Ashwin, myself, and Ian have primarily been the contributors working on this from a Microsoft point of view. But we have a bunch of community members from across, uh, across well, both Microsoft, but a bunch of third parties as well who are contributing things like data connectors, analytic modules, uh, threat intelligence providers. So our support and breadth is kind of growing all the time. It's a Python project, and it will kind of run in any Python environment. 
but it's built primarily for Jupyter Notebooks. So if you're not familiar with Jupyter Notebooks, they are a great interactive browser-based compute environment where you can run blocks of code and see the output of the code. They're really good for experimentations. They're heavily used by data science and science in general. But they work really well for security analysis, where you want to try something out, see if it works, maybe do something else. And so we've got lots of features in Jupyter Notebooks, such as uh, widgets to help you select and uh, view data in a really easy manner. So things like Alert Viewer is a feature that allows you to see a list of alerts, select them, and in real time kind of see the various values associated with them. You can also, when you're using notebooks, scale them out quite easily. Uh, Netflix is a big user of notebooks. They've done a lot of projects on this. They've blogged about it a lot, but a lot of Netflix data jobs just run on notebooks. So if you're, if you're thinking this isn't something that's going to scale well for an enterprise level SOC, say, it, it really is. You can also automate them with various tools and platforms. Things like Paper Mill allow for headless execution of a notebook. You can pass it a parameter, say an alert ID, and ingest that into the notebook and execute the notebook without having to touch it. So lots of cool things you can do with them. Now, hopefully Mystic Pi sounds like something you're interested in. If it is, there's kind of two good places to go and find about, out about it. The first, obviously, is GitHub. It's an open source project. Everything is on there. We also have a, what is a pretty good set of documentation, even if we do say so, on Read the Docs. We have done a bunch of training. So at FireCon, if anyone was there, we did some training on this. We've also got a bunch of webinars and blogs online about getting started. Uh, you can also reach out to us. MysticPy at Microsoft.com goes to the three of us. We are more than welcome, more than happy to, to help you get started, run training for your team, take feedback, feature requests, whatever it is. Really, this is a, a kind of living and growing project. Now, rather than do a demo, I thought I'd just point you at our lab. So we built this for uh, PyCon the other year, actually. And what it is, is a fully browser-based lab where you can go to this URL. It will spin up some compute provided by the Binder project. And you can go and follow a bunch of instructions and uh, conduct a lab exercise to do some security analysis using the various features of Mystic Pi. So if you want a very quick introduction, you don't need to install anything, you don't need to know anything, just go to that URL. Finally. As I said, this is a community project. And as such, we want to get more and more people involved. So this month, it was meant to be last month, we had to delay it, uh, we are running our hack month. We have did this last year as well. But what it is, is a month for people to get involved with Mystic Pi. We know there are a lot of people who maybe have used Mystic Pi, or want to use it, or want to contribute, but just aren't familiar or used to the process of contributing to an open source project. So we've got together, put together a bunch of ideas about how people can contribute, worked with our steering council to set some priorities. And throughout the month, we're here to help people who want to contribute. We're going to give you know, guidance and support about how to develop the features, but also things like how to raise that PR how to hit the checks to get it to pass, and ultimately get it into the project. So if you think this is cool, or if you've used Mystic Pi and think it's missing something that your team needs, uh, feel free to get involved with Hack Month and, uh, and contribute it to us. We've, uh, we've already kind of got loads of great ideas out there, but we're always, uh, always open to more. So that's it. Thank you very much. Ooh.